हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू क्रिएटिव मेडिसिन इन दिस लेक्चर वी विल लर्न अबाउट so first we will see the chemotherapeutic regimens we have two types of regimens which are caf and cmf cmf include cyclophosphamide methotrexate and 5-fluorouracil whereas caf include cyclophosphamide adriamycin and 5-fluorouracil okay now this caf regimen is most important for the diagnosis for the therapeutic it is preferred so if there is resistant to this caf regimen then we can use um If there is resistant to CAF regimen, then you can use taxanes. If the patient is even taxane resistant also, then you can use ixa bp loam can be used. Ixa bp loam can be used. Okay. Then if the patient is HER2 new positive, then if the patient is HER2 new positive, then you can give um, trastuzumab. Trastuzumab is given. If the patient is HER2 new positive, trastuzumab is given. Second line drug for HER2 new positivity is lapatinib. can be given now if the person is metastatic and also refractory breast carcinoma in metastatic and refractory breast carcinoma then you can give sunitinib actually this sunitinib is the drug which is given for metastatic and refractory renal cell carcinoma this sunitinib is also given for uh, imatinib resistant breast carcinoma it is also given for imatinib resistant gist sorry it is also given for imatinib resistant gist and metastatic and refractory breast carcinoma then we have hormonal therapy in hormonal therapy is mainly given for estrogen receptor positive breast cancer cells those thus in hormonal therapy either the source of production of estrogen is cut medically or surgically so that means you can do either bilateral oophorectomy is done or you can do medical oophorectomy can be done or you can block the receptor of the estrogen can be done you can also block the receptor of estrogen so these are the things which you do in hormonal therapy this is surgical so if you do medical hormonal therapy so treatment of medical um, medical oophorectomy or hormonal therapy include you can do ovarian ablation can be done which includes bilateral oophorectomy can be done ovarian ablation can be done which includes by by lateral oophorectomy and lh rh agonist that is lh and gn rh agonist can be given so you can give gn uh, rh agonist like gosarelin luprolite can also be given to the patient then you can also give selective estrogen receptor modulators which include tamoxifen and raloxifen are given and also we give aromatase inhibitors aromatase inhibitors which include non steroidal uh, aromatase inhibitors like letrazole and enastrozole are given and you can also give anti estrogens like you can give fulvestrant is given so an aromatic inhibitors like non steroidal letrazole and enastrozole are given and steroidal like um, exemestane are given we can also give anti estrogens like fulvestrant can be given and progestins like mezesterol and also medroxy progesterone acetate so all these can also be given to the patient so so these are the treatment of hormonal therapy so if hormonal therapy is there first you can do medical first bilateral oophorectomy is done and also you can do medical oophorectomy where you block the receptor of estrogen this medical oophorectomy first you can do ovarian ablation then selective estrogen receptor modulators can be used where you use tamoxifen raloxifen can be used and also uh, then you can also use aromatase inhibitors like non steroidal aromatase inhibitors like letrazole and enastrozole are used and also steroidal aromatic inhibitors like exemestane is used anti estrogens like fulvestrin and progestins like mezesterol and medroxy progesterone acetate are also used now if you see the drug of choice in hormonal therapy in premenstrual patients this include tamoxifen is the drug of choice for hormonal therapy in premenstrual patients then if you were asked what is the drug of choice for hormonal therapy in post menstrual patients then we give the aromatase inhibitors are given for post menstrual patients so premenstrual patients you give tamoxifen for hormonal therapy whereas post menstrual patients drug of choice for hormonal therapy is aromatase inhibitors now what are the advantages of this aromatase inhibitors 
these aromatase inhibitors do not increase the risk of endometrial carcinoma that is one they the one important advantage of aromatase inhibitors is they does not increase the endometrial cancer and uh, the disadvantage of aromat uh, aromatase inhibitors are they decrease the bone mineral density and thus increases the risk of fractures in these patients okay then then if you see some important points about we will see about tamoxifen also so this tamoxifen the dose of tamoxifen is 10 mg bd for 5 years and it is actually a partial agonist on the pituitary gland it is a partial agonist on the pituitary gland bone and also it is a partial agonist on the uterus and it is also a partial agonist on the liver and it has antagonistic action on the breast cells and blood vessels okay so the main side effects of tamoxifen therapy is the most common side effect is this results in hot flushes increased vaginal bleeding increased deep uh, um, venous thrombosis will occur then thromboembolic phenomenon complications are seen this causes increased endometrial complications endometrial cancer decreased visual acuity and increased risk of cancer is seen in with retinal deposits are seen in tamoxifen then then if you see lymph node levels then in the lymph node levels we have relationship it is three types 1 2 and 3 in lymph node 1 lymph node 1 is present below and lateral to the pectoralis major minor it is present below and lateral to the pectoralis minor so we have anterior lymph node posterior lymph node and lateral lymph node so level 1 lymph node are present below and lateral to the pectoralis minor which includes anterior lymph node posterior lymph node and lateral lymph node whereas level level 2 lymph nodes are present behind the pectoralis minor which includes central lymph node and interpectoral lymph node okay they are present behind the pectoralis minor and these include central lymph node and interpectoral lymph node level 3 will include medial and above the pectoralis minor this includes apical lymph node so we have first level 1 which is below and lateral to the pectoralis minor which include anterior lymph node apical lymph node sorry anterior lymph node posterior lymph node and lateral lymph node these are below and lateral to the pectoralis minor then the level 2 which is behind the pectoralis minor which include central lymph node and interpectoral lymph node then we have level 3 which is medial and above the pectoralis minor which include apical lymph node then we have mastectomy so in mastectomy mastectomy can be of uh different types first we have simple mastectomy in simple mastectomy you give an elliptical incision if this is this is the breast tissue you give an elliptical incision and you will um sorry if this is the breast tissue and this is the areola you give the elliptical incision with skin including the lump with skin overlying the lump and you do end block resection of nipple areola skin breast tissue and breast mass are removed completely you will remove nipple areola skin breast tissue breast mass along with the lump is removed so this is simple mastectomy then we have second type which is extended mastectomy in extended mastectomy you will do simple mastectomy along with that if you remove level 1 lymph nodes then it is simple ma extended mastectomy extended mastectomy is simple mastectomy with level 1 lymph nodes are extended mastectomy then we have modified radical mastectomy in modified radical mastectomy you will do simple mastectomy that is removal of nipple areola skin breast tissue and breast mass and you will remove level 1 and 2 lymph nodes that is uh, Uh, modified radical mastectomy so in modified radical mastectomy you will do simple mastectomy and you will also remove level 1 level 2 lymph nodes also that is modified radical mastectomy then we have halsted radical mastectomy in halsted radical mastectomy in this you will do number 1 you will remove the end block removal of nipple areola skin breast tissue breast mass is done that is nothing but simple mastectomy along with that you will remove level 2 level 3 level 1 level 2 level 3 lymph nodes are removed along with that you will excise the pectoralis minor and pectoralis major also so halsted radical mastectomy is you will do simple mastectomy that is end block removal of nipple areola skin breast tissue and breast mass and then you will also remove level 1 level 2 level 3 lymph node and then you will excise the pectoralis major and pectoralis minor so this is halsted radical mastectomy then if you see the structures spared in halsted 
radical mastectomy is in hasted radical mastectomy a b c structures are spared that is axillary vein is spared bell's nerve is spared and also cephalic vein is spared axillary vein bell's nerve cephalic vein is spared in hasted radical mastectomy then we have extended radical mastectomy so in extended radical mastectomy here you will do radical mastectomy that is you will remove the en bloc removal of nipple areola skin breast tissue and breast mass along with level 1 level 2 level 3 lymph nodes and also you will excise the pectoralis major and minor along with that you will also remove the internal mammary lymph nodes are also removed then that is extended radical mastectomy so if I, with radical mastectomy if you remove internal mammary lymph nodes then that is extended radical mastectomy then you have one more which is super radical mastectomy in super radical mastectomy here you will remove radical mastectomy along with that you will remove the sim structures what is sim structures which is you will remove supra clavicular lymph nodes and you will give remove infra mammary lymph nodes you will remove infra mammary lymph nodes supra clavicular lymph nodes and you will also remove mediastinal lymph nodes that is uh, called has uh, supra radical super radical mastectomy so in super radical mastectomy you will remove the uh, along with radical mastectomy you will remove supra clavicular lymph nodes infra mammary lymph nodes and mediastinal lymph nodes are also removed then if you see the modifications modifications of modified radical mastectomy or variants of modified radical mastectomy include one we have ochin claus method ochin claus method of modified radical mastectomy we have and petes modified radical mastectomy ochin ochin claus method is nothing but it is equal to modified radical mastectomy where you remove the en bloc removal of nipple areola and the breast tissue everything is removed along with that you will remove lymph node 1 and 2 that is modified radical mastectomy which is achin class modified radical mastectomy then we have petes modified radical mastectomy in petes modified radical mastectomy you will remove en bloc removal of nipple areola breast tissue and breast mass is removed along with that level 1 level 2 and level 3 lymph nodes are removed along with that you will excise the pectoralis minor okay that is petes modify modification then we have sconlons modification in sconlons modification what do you do in this you will do you will do en bloc removal of nipple and areola complex with skin breast tissue breast mass is done along with that you will remove level 1 level 2 and level 3 lymph nodes and you will divide the pectoralis minor but you will not excise it that is conlins modified radical mastectomy then if you see the complications complications are we have seroma is a complication it can result in wound infection or flap necrosis can occur it can also lead to injury to long thoracic nerve can occur so complications are seroma wound infection flap necrosis injury to long thoracic nerve can also occur seroma wound infection and injury to long thoracic nerve and there can also be injury to thoraco dorsal nerve which supplies the uh, latissimus dorsi which is also called as bell's nerve it is also seen or lymphedema may be seen and persistent axillary fat pad may be seen next next we have to learn about breast conservative surgery breast conservative surgery is performed by ductal carcinoma in situ and it is also done in stage 1 2a and 2b that is it is done in locally advanced breast carcinoma not locally advanced breast carcinoma sorry it is done done in early breast carcinoma early breast carcinoma we we do this breast conservative surgery so what do you do you can do three things you can do in breast conservative surgery if this is the breast you can do if this is the lump first you can do lumpectomy can be done second you can do wide local excision can be done third you can do quadrantectomy can be done you can do lumpectomy or wide local excision or you can do quadrantectomy also so excision of the lump is lumpectomy in wide local excision you will put 1 cm margin is put and you have quadrantectomy is also done okay whole quadrant excision 
then if you see the disadvantages so you will remove the breast and also small amount of the lump is removed so because you have removed the breast and small amount of lump of the breast rest of the breast is still left so there will be increased chances of recurrences in these tumors in breast uh, in breast conservative surgery in order to prevent the increased recurrences then you should do radiotherapy should be given in the breast in the breast carcinoma then you have um, contraindications of breast conservative surgery these contraindications include we have two types one we have absolute contraindication second we have relative contraindication absolute contraindications are pregnancy two or more tu more than two tumors are present in two different quadrants are present and uh, malignant appearing with diffuse micro calcifications is present or if there is persistently positive margins or if there is exposure of therapeutic radiation in the past then in relative breast conservative surgery the relative contraindications of breast conservative surgery are presence of collagen vascular diseases like scleroderma presence of collagen vascular diseases like scleroderma active lupus erythematosus or presence of multiple tumors in the same breast in the same quadrant and in determinate calcification if there is large tumor in the small breast or if there is large pedunculous breast or if the tumor is actually centrally located in this cases you cannot do breast conservative surgery so what are the contraindications breast conservative surgery is not do, done in that is absolute contraindications are pregnancy two or more tumors in different quadrants and malignant appearing diffuse micro calcifications if there is already previously exposed to therapeutic radiations or persistently positive margins then relative contraindications are collagen vascular disease like scleroderma active lupus erythematosus or presence of multiple tumors in the same quadrant or indeterminate calcification large tumor in small breast and large pedunculous breast and centrally located tumor so all these are relative contraindications of breast conservative surgery then after you have done breast conservative surgery you should do breast reconstruction so in breast reconstruction you have to use autologous flaps are used for breast reconstruction and you can also use alloplastic flaps for breast reconstruction in autologous flaps for breast reconstruction autologous flaps for breast reconstruction are we have tram flap then we have latissimus dorsi flap and thoraco epigastric flap is present and lateral thigh flap can be used so you can use trans flap tram flap that is transverse rectus abdominis muscle flap can be used you can use latissimus dorsi flap thoraco epigastric flap and lateral thigh flap can be used then you can also use gluteal flap can be used and also rubens flap can be used gluteal mm -hmm. flap and rubens flap can be used so all these are autologous uh, reconstruction techniques then if you see the alloplastic in alloplastic that is these are not uh, these are from outside synthetic so these include silicon gel implant and this also includes silicon implant with saline refill silicon gel implant and silicon implant implant with saline refill can be done this alloplastic implant can be either put be, be, beneath the pectoralis major or they can either be put beneath the skin also you can put them either beneath the skin or you can either put them beneath the pectoralis major muscle also once you have put the breast implant in order to look for recurrences or for screening you should do mri to the patient next you you have something called as combined implants also in combined implants you will combine the uh, autologous like tram implant that is transverse rectus abdominis flap this can be combined with an implant similarly la latissimus dorsi flap can be combined with an implant so this is tram implant which is transverse rectus abdominis flap then you have prognostic factors in the prognostic factors stage is more important than axillary lymph node clearance status so in metastatic breast carcinoma so if you see metastatic breast cancer in this hormone receptor status is important so if the patient is erpr positive then you can do you can give trastuzumab can be given and luprolide can be given or any hormone receptor hormone therapy can be given if the patient is erpr negative then we give chemotherapy to the patient okay most important prognostic factor is stage 
followed by axillary lymph lymphadenectomy then then second important is okay let us now learn some important points about ductal carcinoma in situ so if you see the ductal carcinoma in situ so if you see ductal carcinoma in situ ductal carcinoma in situ has high risk of progression to invasive ductal carcinoma it is present both in females and males and hence this ductal carcinoma is the one which is present both in males and females then if you see lobules lobules are present only in females because lobules are present only in females lobular carcinoma is most common in females rather than in males it is seen in females exclusively then if you see classification of ductal carcinoma in situ it is divided based on the grade and necrosis classification is mainly done based on grade and necrosis now the ductal carcinoma in situ is divided into two types one we have low grade ductal carcinoma in situ second we have high grade ductal carcinoma in situ in low grade ductal carcinoma in situ we have cribriform pattern then we have papillary pattern then we have micropapillary pattern in high grade ductal carcinoma in situ we have solid pattern and comedo carcinomas are seen then if you see on mammography you will see presence of micro calcifications are seen due to necrosis if you were asked what is the most sensitive diagnosis for ductal carcinoma in situ it is mammography if you were asked what is the most sensitive investigation for diagnosis of micro calcifications for diagnosis of micro micro calcifications it is mammography normally most important sensitive investigation for ductal carcinoma in situ is mri most sensitive investigation for ductal carcinoma in situ is mri but most sensitive investigation for diagnosis of micro calcifications is mammography then if you see the treatment in the treatment you can excise it by using a needle location you can excise the specimen now if the patient is low grade ductal carcinoma in situ then you can do lumpectomy can be done if the patient is high grade or ductal carcinoma in situ with limited disease if the patient is ductal carcinoma in situ with limited disease then you can do lumpectomy can be done plus radiotherapy can be given so in low grade ductal carcinoma in situ you can do lumpectomy if the patient is ductal carcinoma in situ with limited disease with only a limited disease then you can do lumpectomy with radiotherapy can be given then then if you see lobular carcinoma in situ in lobular carcinoma in situ first this originates from the terminal ductal lobular units so it is seen only in the females because lobules are present only in the females it is actually multicentric and it is bilateral also so as a result the it is a marker for increased risk of bilateral breast carcinoma so on cytopathology you will see presence of cytoplasmic mucoid globules will be seen mucoid globules is present and also you will see indian file pattern indian file pattern is actually the hallmark then if you see the clinical features you will see the lump is of irregular ill defined margins characteristics of this uh, lobular carcinoma in situ is neighborhood calcification you will see presence of neighborhood calcification is seen in lobular carcinoma in situ then treatment of this lobular carcinoma in situ is you can treat it by tamoxifen and raloxifen can be used for treatment of lobular carcinoma in situ okay next
द नेक्स्ट इंपॉर्टेंट इज फॉलो अप ऑफ ब्रेस्ट कार्सिनोमा इफ यू सी द फॉलो अप ऑफ ब्रेस्ट कार्सिनोमा यू विल हैव टू सी हिस्ट्री एंड फिजिकल एग्जामिनेशन इन हिस्ट्री एंड फिजिकल एग्जामिनेशन इन द फॉलो अप एवरी थ्री टू सिक्स मंथ यू शुड फॉलो द पेशेंट फॉर फर्स्ट थ्री ईयर्स You should follow the patient every three to six months for first three years, and every twelve to six months for fourth year and fifth year. And you should trans. You should follow up the patient annually after that. So in breast carcinoma, first you will follow up the patient for three to six months for the first three years. Three to six months for first three years, and every three six to twelve months for fourth and fifth years, and thereafter annually. Then, then if you see the mammography. in mammographically you can uh, you can follow up the patient using mammography annually beginning no earlier than 6 months of radiotherapy after doing 6 months of radiotherapy you can uh, do it once mammography and then you can follow up the patient annually for radiotherapy then if you see breast self examination self examination is recommended to do monthly and pelvic examination is recommended to to do annually and what are the investigations which are not recommended for routine surveillance investigations which are not recommended for routine surveillance are we do not need to do common blood complete blood count lft chest x ray is not needed usg is not needed any bone scan or pet scan or ct scan mri carcin ca antigens or uh, ca all these are not needed all these investigations are not needed what should you do for follow up you will have to do history and physical examination every 3 to 6 months for first 3 years and then 6 to 12 year 12 months for fourth year and fifth year and annually thereafter then you can do uh, mammography annually can be done it should not be done in the first 6 months of radiotherapy after first 6 months of radiotherapy you can start the patient you, you can start doing red you can start doing mammography and you can do it every annually every yearly then breast self examination it is recommended to do monthly and pelvic examination it is recommended to to do annually investigations which are not recommended are blood investigations like complete blood picture uh, liver function tests are not recommended other investigations like chest x ray usg abdomen or usg pelvis or um, mri pet scan ct scan tumor markers are not at all recommended for surveillance of breast cancer patients now if you see the prognosis of breast cancer patient the most important prognosis in most of the malignancies is staging only that is tnm staging is most important in most of the malignancies exceptions are two true that two that is in wilms tumor we do histology more than grading in wilms tumor we do histology is more important than grading whereas in soft tissue tumors that is tumor grade is important in soft tissue tumors in soft tissue tumors tumor grade is important breast carcinoma has in any other carcinoma staging is important in breast carcinoma then if you were asked what is the single most important prognostic factor single most important prognostic factor is axillary lymph node status is single most important prognostic factor then if you were asked what is the most important prognostic factor in metastatic breast carcinoma is erpr status is the most important prognostic factor in metastatic breast carcinoma that too in metastatic but single most important prognostic factor is axillary lymph nodes then if you were asked about the nottingham post prognostic index nottingham prognostic index is equal to 0.2 into tumor size plus lymph node stage plus tumor grade so this includes number 1 0.2 into tumor size plus lymph node stage plus lymph node grade is seen in nottingham prognostic index this nottingham prognostic index is mainly to select patients for adjuvant therapy then we have one more grading which is called has bloom richardson grading according to bloom richardson grading what do you see in bloom richardson grading this is actually a tnm grading which shows tumor node and met, sorry tumor nuclear i'm sorry it is not tumor tubule formation bloom richardson grading is t is tubule formation n is nuclear polymorphism n is nuclear polymorphism m is mitosis so tnm which includes tubule formation nuclear polymorphism pleomorphism and 
meiosis. So Bloom Richardson rating tells us that it includes tumor, tubule, tubule formation, nuclear pleomorphism, and mitosis. Then we have one more prognostic index, which is called as Van News Prognostic Index. According to Van News Prognostic Index, this is a this is done in patients with ductal carcinoma in situ who do not require radiotherapy. It is done in those patients who do not require radiotherapy. This is based on microsphag. So what is this microsphag? Micro is micro calcifications is seen. So in Van Van News Prognostic Index, in Van News Prognostic Index, you will see micro calcifications are seen. Then you will see size of the tumor will be seen, and then you will also see the width of the margins and age of the patient is seen. A for age. And G for grade of the tumor. So micro sphag is for Von News Prognostic Index, which is done for DCIS, that is ductal carcinoma in situ patients who do not require radiotherapy. This includes micro calcification, size of the tumor, width of the margins, age, and grade of the tumor. Size of the tumor, width of the margin, width of the margin, age of the patient, and grade of the tumor. Next. Once you have learned about the grading systems, next important is sentinel lymph node biopsy. In sentinel lymph node biopsy, first and foremost, first sentinel lymph node is the first lymph node which is involved. First lymph node which requires the lymph directly from the cancerous part is called as sentinel lymph node. It is first described by Cabana in carcinoma pen penis. Then the sentinel lymph node in carcinoma penis is called as Cabana lymph node after the after Cabana who has described the sentinel lymph nodes. This sentinel lymph node biopsy is established in breast carcinoma. It is established in penile carcinoma. It is established in malignant melanoma. It is established in head and neck carcinoma. Then it is established in also vulvar carcinoma. You can see the establishment of sentinel lymph node biopsy. So it is established in carcinoma breast, penis, malignant melanoma, head and neck carcinoma and vulvar carcinoma. Then what is the indications? Indications are including, includes clinically non-palpable axillary lymph nodes. If you cannot palpate any axillary lymph nodes clinically, then you can do this sentinel lymph node biopsy. There are two techniques for sentinel lymph node biopsy. One technique is we have blue dye technique where you introduce a dye which is 1% lymphase urine is given. 1% lymphase urine also called as isosulfan blue also called as pattern B blue, also called as methylene blue is given. And then so the second type is radioactive uh, colloid technique can also be used in radioactive colloid technique. This is done by using technetium 99M labeled sulfur. Okay, so you have two things, one blue dye technique which is by using 1% lymphazerin, petes V and um, Methylene blue, second technique is radioactive colloid technique which uses technetium 99 labeled sulfur. Then, then if you see the minimum maximum accuracy, maximum accuracy is when both the techniques are combined together, then we have maximum accuracy. So, how do you do sentinel lymph node biopsy? So, first you will uh, see the First, you will take the dye and radioactive substances and both these are injected around the tumor. If this is the tumor, you will inject it around the tumor. Once you inject it around the tumor, the lymph nodes which are nearer to the tumor, the lymph nodes which are immediately linked to the tumor, they become blue. Generally, in carcinoma breast, there can be more than one sentinel lymph nodes may be present in carcinoma breast. Simultaneously, you will also put a probe here. So when you put a probe, <coughs> when you put a gamma probe here, this gamma probe will detect the radioactivity associated with this uh, radioactive substance which you have injected. So the lymph node with maximum radioactivity will have the maximum uptake of radioactive substance and hence this is the lymph node with maximum radioactivity is the one which is sentinel lymph node. So you will have to remove the sentinel lymph nodes easily and they can be sent for systemic for histopathological examination once you have sent it for histopathological examination so the next step based on the positiveness or negativeness of the result
नेक्स्ट यू हैव सीन हाउ यू हैव यू विल डू सेंटिनल लिम्फ नोड बायोप्सी नाउ व्हाट इज द कॉम्प्लिकेशंस द मोस्ट कॉमन कॉम्प्लिकेशन इज बिकॉज यू आर इंजेक्टिंग द आइसोसल्फन ब्लू और एल्यूजेरिन सॉरी लिम्फाजेरिन अल्फा आइसो सॉरी बिकॉज यू आर इंजेक्टिंग द आइसोसल्फन ब्लू और लिम्फोजेरिन और पेटन बी ब्लू डाई इन टू द टिश्यू दिस विल रिजल्ट इन स्किन टैटूइंग इज द साइड इफेक्ट एंड इट विल ऑल्सो इफ यू आर आस वॉट इज द मोस्ट कॉमनली इंश्योर्ड नर्व इन सेंटिनल लिम्फ नोट बायोप्सी दैट इज इंटर कोस्टो ब्रेकियल नर्व इज द मोस्ट कॉमनली इंश्योर्ड नर्व इन सेंटिनल लिम्फ नोट बायोप्सी नेक्स्ट इफ यू सी द कॉन्ट्रा इंडिकेशन ऑफ सेंटिनल लिम्फ नोट बायोप्सी इज Uh, in the breast cancer palpable in lymphadenopathy is a contraindication or prior axillary surgery or chemotherapy and radiotherapy are contraindications of sentinel lymph node biopsy what are the contraindications palpable lymphadenopathy prior axillary therapy surgery chemotherapy and radiotherapy and also multifocal breast carcinoma is also a contraindication for sentinel lymph node biopsy then if you see the complication in complications as i have already said most common complication is skin tattooing can occur then most common nerve involved is in sentinel lymph node biopsy is intercostal brachial nerve involved other complications which include are there can be necrosis of the area urine discoloration can be there the patient can have anaphylactic reactions and also the most common injured nerve is intercostal brachial nerve so this is about sentinel lymph node biopsy then the most important thing next is inflammatory breast carcinoma in inflammatory breast carcinoma this is also called as mastitis carcinomatosa this is mastitis carcinomatosa so in inflammatory breast cancer or mastitis carcinomatosa it will correspond to stage 4d that is equal to stage 3b or stage 4d mainly it is stage 4d not stage 3b then this uh, um, inflammatory breast carcinoma will function has locally advanced breast carcinoma it behave has locally advanced breast carcinoma if there is involvement of more than 33% of breast skin by inflammatory changes like by erythema or brownie indurations or body orange appearance this body orange appearance then we call it has inflammatory breast carcinoma why is body orange appearance occurs because this body orange appearance occurs due to the early lymphatic permeation by the tumor cells and cutaneous lymphedema that means the lymph node metastasis or lymphatic metastasis will result in body orange appearance so from the lymphatics it can go into the lymph nodes from there the metastasis can go into the distant organs also in inflammatory breast carcinoma present of lump is not mandatory even without lump also the the uh, inflammatory breast carcinoma can be present then if you see the clinical features clinical features are on the breast skin you will see presence of inflammatory lesions will be seen and in 75% of the patients you will see presence of axillary lymph node metastasis and in 25% of the patients you will see presence of distant metastasis will be seen what is the investigation of choice investigation of choice is skin biopsy is seen and on the skin biopsy you will see presence of tumor cells are seen in the lymphatics tumor cells will be seen in the lymphatics on skin biopsy so this inflammatory breast cancer is the only cancer of the breast where skin biopsy is the investigation of choice next in this you will do the treatment is you do neo adjuvant chemotherapy plus modified radical mastectomy plus radiotherapy is done in this patient this is the most malignant type of breast cancer with worst prognosis so let me summarize the things in inflammatory bowel disease which is also called as mastitis carcinomatosa it corresponds to stage 4d which behaves like locally advanced breast carcinoma it mainly involves more than 33% of breast skin by inflammatory changes here you will see presence of erythema brownie induration and powdery orange appearance is seen presence of lump is not a mass mandatory mand is not mandatory for 
प्रेजेंस ऑफ लंप इज नॉट मैंडेटरी फॉर इन्फ्लामेटरी ब्रेस्ट कैंसर एंड पेजेट डिजीज ऑफ निपल इफ यू सी द क्लिनिकल फ्यूचर प्रेजेंस ऑफ इन्फ्लामेटरी चेंजेस विल बी सीन ऑन द ब्रेस्ट विथ सेवेंटी फाइव परसेंट ऑफ द पेशेंट्स प्रेजेंटिंग विथ एक्सिलरी लिम्फ नोट मेटास्टेसिस एंड ट्वेंटी फाइव परसेंट ऑफ द पेशेंट्स प्रेजेंट विथ डिस्टेंट मेटास्टेसिस एंड द इन्वेस्टिगेशन इज यू डू स्किन बायोप्सी रिमेंबर दिस इज द ओनली कैंसर वेर यू डू स्किन बायोप्सी एंड स्किन बायोप्सी इज इन्वेस्टिगेशन ऑफ चॉइस फॉर एमोंग द ब्रेस्ट कैंसर रीशन ऑन स्किन बायोप्सी यू विल सी प्रेजेंस ऑफ ट्यूमर सेल्स इन द लिम्फेटिक्स ट्रीटमेंट इज यू डू मॉडिफाइड न्यू एजुमेंट कीमोथेरापी मॉडिफाइड रेडिकल मैस्टेक्टमी विथ रेडियोथेरापी यू डू फॉर ट्रीटमेंट नाउ वॉट अबाउट द ब्रेस्ट कैंसर इन प्रेगनेंसी so in breast cancer in pregnancy is here it occurs in 1 in 1000 pregnancies it is the most common type of non gynecological malignancy in pregnancy the most common type is invasive ductal carcinoma is most common in breast carcinoma so most common presentation is you will see presence of breast lump will be seen and the breast changes are seen which will there will be some breast changes and these will mask the skin and sim skin skin and sorry these will mask the signs and symptoms of the breast cancer see during pregnancy <clears throat> there occurs breast changes so these breast changes will mask the signs and symptoms of breast cancer in 75% of the cases there will be axillary lymph node metastasis will be seen and the first investigation which is done is ultrasonography and mammography is not a preferred investigation by why because there is a uh, uh, radiation exposure is uh, seen through mammography because she is a pregnant woman we do not want her to be exposed to radiation in any way so mammography is not the treat is not invest is not used for investigation investigation of choice is you can do biopsy now treatment treatment is if you see it is an early invasive breast carcinoma early invasive breast carcinoma you can do simple mastectomy can be done if you think it is a uh, advanced locally advanced breast carcinoma then you should do neo adjuvant chemotherapy with modified radical mastectomy with radiotherapy can be done then general anesthesia will increase the risk of risk in first trimester so we do not do general anesthesia we should we do not do Oh, modified radical mastectomy in first trimester this modified radical mastectomy is mainly done in the second trimester and maximum organogenesis in first trimester organogenesis will also occur in first trimester so the new adjuvant chemotherapy is never done in first trimester because if you do new adjuvant chemotherapy it can result in congenital malformations and radiotherapy is contraindicated in pregnancy so you will do second trimester you will do modified radical mastectomy and new adjuvant chemotherapy can be given after the first trimester completion and radiotherapy is given after delivery so the thing is you will give new adjuvant chemotherapy after the first trimester and then you will give a mad modified radical mastectomy after the second trimester and then you will give radiotherapy after delivery it is given so so let me repeat the total breast carcinoma in pregnancy incidence of breast carcinoma in pregnancy is 1 in 3000 pregnancies it is 1 in 3000 pregnancies it is the most common uh, breast most common type of non gynecological malignancy in pregnancy most common type of breast carcinoma is invasive ductal carcinoma most common presentation during pregnancy is breast lump breast ch ch changes during pregnancy will mask the signs and symptoms of breast cancer so as a result the patient in the advanced stage will present to the to the opd then 75% of patients will have axillary lymph node metastasis at the time of presentation investigation first investigation done is ultrasonography mammography is contraindicated so we do not do due to the exposure of radiation in pregnancy investigation of choice is biopsy then uh, then if you see then treatment the early invasive breast carcinoma then you should do simple mastectomy if it is locally advanced breast carcinoma then you should do neo adjuvant chemotherapy with ra modified radical mastectomy and radiotherapy is given if you give general anesthesia general anesthesia will increase the risk of abortions 
in first trimester of pregnancy so you do not give general anesthesia in first trimester pregnancy so the surgery modified radical mastectomy which requires general anesthesia is done mainly in the second trimester then maximum organogenesis occurs in the first trimester but because so you do not do chemotherapy in first trimester because chemotherapy results in fetal malformations and congenital malformations so neoadjuvant chemotherapy can be given in the first trimester after first trimester you can give neoadjuvant chemotherapy and modified radical mastectomy is given in the second trimester and radiotherapy is given after delivery the next important thing is about the male breast cancer in male breast cancer the most this male breast cancer is responsible for 1% of cases of breast cancer the most common type is it is invasive ductal carcinoma is the most common type of male breast cancer then in male breast cancer only ducts are present so the this is the only invasive ductal carcinoma in males there is only invasive ductal carcinoma in males there is no lobular carcinoma seen in males in females both ducts and lobules are present so you see both ductular carcinoma and also lobular carcinoma is seen in the females then it is generally seen in the sixth decade of life then if you see the status erpr status of the patients it is positive erpr is positive in 80% of cases and her to new is negative sorry her to new is positive in 35% of cases erpr positive in 80% of cases and her to new is positive in 35% of cases endogenous and exogenous estrogen will also increase the risk in the case so what are the risk factors of male breast carcinoma risk factors include presence of cirrhosis infertility bilateral undescended testis can occur androgen insensitivity syndrome brca2 mutation so all these are the risk factors of male breast carcinoma in 20% of cases of gynecomastia gyneco gynecomastia can convert into breast carcinoma in 20% of cases but gynecomastia is not a risk factor of breast carcinoma what do you see in clinical features you will see presence of lump and there is early nipple and the areola involvement will be seen along with involvement of breast skin is seen investigation of choice is you should do biopsy in this case the treatment is treatment is you should do stage by stage treatment and the prognosis is almost similar to female breast cancer so we let me repeat the male breast cancer again male breast cancer is responsible for 1% of breast carcinoma it is the most common type which is most common type of male breast cancer is invasive ductal carcinoma in male breast only ducts are present only invasive ductal carcinoma occurs in males whereas both ducts and lobules are present in females so ductal and lobular carcinomas occur in female lobular carcinoma in in breast is exclusively seen in females it is generally seen in sixth decade erpr status is positive in these patients in 80% of patients whereas her to new is positive in 35% of patients then you have endosco endogenous and exogenous estrogen also increases the risk of male breast cancer then if you see the risk factors risk factors are state of hyperestrogenemia like cirrhosis of liver infertility bilateral undescended testis androgen insensitivity syndrome or testicular feminizing syndrome brca2 mutation all these will result in a uh, breast carcinoma but in 20% of the cases gynecomastia will precede the breast carcinoma but still this gynecomastia is not a risk factor for breast carcinoma so if you see the presentation most common presentation is lump is seen uh, there will be early involvement of nipple breast skin chest wall is seen due to scanty breast tissue in male then if you were asked what is the investigation of choice investigation of choice is biopsy and the treatment is almost similar to the female breast cancer then then if you see the next important thing is about the paget's disease of nipple so in paget's disease of nipple it is actually a chronic eczematous lesion which is seen uh, in the eczematous lesion which is seen of the nipple is called has 
pager disease it is chronic eczematous nipple of sorry eczematous disease of nipple it is actually associated with either ductal carcinoma in situ or it is associated with invasive ductal cancer the differentiation of this is in pager disease of nipple you will see that there will be cea positivity is the one which which is uh, present in pager disease of nipple whereas even melanoma will have similar configuration but in melanoma it is s100 positive whereas in pager disease of nipple cea is positive carcino embryonic antigen is positive then what are the clinical features one you will see presence of eczematous eruptions will be seen on the nipple and also the lump may be present or may not be present but it is not mandatory then for diagnosis you will have to do complete mammography is done along with the biopsy is done in the patient and in the biopsy it is it is done due to rule out the multicentric disease and in the biopsy you will see presence of paged cells are seen treatment is you can do simple mastectomy can be done in the patient okay so first so if you see let me repeat again pager disease of nipple is a chronic eczematous lesion or nip, eruption of nipple it is associated with underlying malignancies especially it is associated with ductal carcinoma in situ and invasive ductal carcinoma here carcino embryonic antigen will be positive whereas in malignant melanoma s100 will be positive then lump shows lump may be present or absent in the uh, pager disease of nipple and do you see eczematous eruptions will be seen on nipple then if you see investigations you can do mammography and biopsy in the biopsy you will see pager cells are seen treatment of pager disease of nipple is simple mastectomy can be done then we have the next important thing is fillot's tumor so what do you see in fillot's tumor fillot's tumor is also called has there are many names for it it is called has cystosarcoma fillot's or it is called has sarcocystis disease of broidy broidy and it is it is dual origin fillot's tumor has dual origin that is it originates either from from mammary epithelium and it also originates from the uh, connective tissue or it originates from the mammary epithelium and it also originates from the connective tissue so this fillot's tumor can be either benign or malignant or it can be borderline also then on cut section if you do on cut section you will see that it is leaf like appearance will be seen on examination you will see leaf like appearance will be seen in the fillot's tumor with monoclonal stroma leaf like appearance with monoclonal stroma will be seen and you will see also presence of cystic areas are seen and with hemorrhage you will see cystic areas with hemorrhage and necrosis is seen then what are the unique features of cystosarcoma fillot's so unique features include you have two three important things are present in the unique features three structures are not involved in a fillot's tumor so what are not involved nipple chest wall and breast skin are not involved in fillot's tumor so then if you see the clinical features breast is massively enlarged and there is bosselated appearance and there will be pressure atrophy there will be bosselated appearance with pressure atrophy will be seen and you will also see present necrosis of the skin is seen bosselated appearance with pressure atrophy necrosis of the skin will be there 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 will be no skin fixity and there is no fixity of the tumor to the chest wall there is no skin fixity and no fixity of the tumor to the chest wall so there will be no nipple retraction also or no ulceration or no deviation then if you see the root of spread so in the root of spread it is hematogenous is more common root of spread and if you were asked what is the most common site of metastasis lungs is the most common site of metastasis is lungs root is hematogenous root investigation of choice investigation of choice is biopsy now how are you going to treat it treatment is based on the appearance if it is benign appearing then you can do wide local excision can be done with 2 cm margin if it is malignant appearing um, cystosarcoma fillot's then you can do simple mastectomy can be done 
ओके सो जो इन दिस के पेशेंट्स यू विल नॉट डू मॉडिफाइड रेडिकल मास्केक्टमी इज नॉट परफॉर्म बिकॉज इट इज एसोसिएटेड विथ लिम्फ नोड मेटास्टेसिस बिकॉज इट इज एसोसिएटेड विथ विथ लिम्फ नोड मेटास्टेसिस मॉडिफाइड रेडिकल मास्केक्टमी इज नॉट परफॉर्म Usually sarcomas are not spread by lymphatics. Sarcomas not spread by lymphatics. Then what are the sarco? Usually sarcomas do not spread by lymphatics. But there are some sarcomas which spread by lymphatics. What are they? The sarcomas which spread by lymphatics are these are actually masses. So what are they? They are malignant fibroid histiosarcoma, malignant fibrous histiosarcoma, angiosarcoma can spread by Uh, lymphatic spread and we have rhabdomyosarcoma sarcoma and also clear cell sarcoma and we have epithelial sarcoma then we have synovial sarcoma then we have synovial sarcoma then malignant fibrous histiocytoma angiosarcoma rhabdomyosarcoma clear cell sarcoma epithelial sarcoma epithelial sarcoma and synovial sarcoma so sarcomas with lymphatic spread are malignant histiosarco malignant fibrous histiosarcoma histiocytoma angiosarcoma rhabdomyosarcoma clear cell sar uh, clear cell carcinoma sorry clear cell sarcoma e epithelial epithelial sarcoma and synovial sarcoma so we will learn one more let me repeat the fillor's tumor again so fillor's tumor fillor's tumor is also called as cystosarcoma fillor's or also called as cirrhosis disease of brody which is fillor's that is leaf like appearance on cross section this fillor's tumor has dual origin that is it has mammary epithelium is present and connective tissue stroma is present this fillor's tumor can be either benign tumor or it can be either malignant tumor also fillor's tumor can be either benign or malignant or it can be borderline so on cut section you will see presence of leaf like appearance will be seen on cut section you will see presence of leaf like appearance will be seen and there will be cystic areas are seen because of hemorrhage and necrosis unique feature is that the three structures are not involved here what are the structures which are not involved in this uh, cystosarcoma fillor's there are skin is not involved and also nipple is not involved chest wall is not involved nipple chest wall breast skin is not involved in cystosarcoma fillor's then clinical features are there is affected this breast is massively enlarged with bosselated appearance like a lipoma pressure atrophy or necrosis of skin is seen there is no fixity of skin because the breast skin is not involved no fixity of tumor to the chest occurs because the chest wall is not involved tumor is also mobile over the chest wall there is no fixity to the skin no fixity to the tumor to the chest wall no nipple retraction no ulceration no deviation is seen because nipple is also not involved then if you see the uh, root of spread the most common root of spread is hematogenous lymph lymphatic root is not seen in part bejet's tumor most common site of spread is metastasis is lungs most common site of metastasis is lungs most common root of spread is hematogenous investigation of choice is biopsy is done and treatment is if it is benign appearing you should do local wide local excision is done with 2 cm margin if it is malignant appearing then we can do simple mastectomy can be done in these patients um modified radical mastectomy is not performed because it is not associated with lymph node metastasis usually sarcomas are not spread by lymphatics so but there are some sarcomas which spread by lymphatics like malignant fibrous histiosarcoma angiosarcoma rhabdomyosarcoma clear cell sarcoma epithelial sarcoma and synovial sarcoma these are the sarcomas which spread by lymphatic spread next next important thing is cancer risk and they are associated with benign breast disease cancer risk and benign breast disease if you see cancer risk with benign breast disease so first we have non proliferative disease in non proliferative lesions first we have non proliferative lesions here there is no increased risk then we have sclerosing adenitis in sclerosing adenosis there is no increased risk and we have duct papilloma duct papilloma also there is no increased risk 
non proliferative lesions scleral sclerosing adenosis and duct papilloma there is no increased risk of benign of no increased risk of cancer non proliferative lesions sclerosing adenitis and breast and duct papilloma no increased risk then if you see we have florid hyperplasia florid hyperplasia this has 1.5 to 2 fold risk whereas we have atypical ductal hyperplasia in atypical ductal hyperplasia you will see four fold risk and atypical lobular hyperplasia where you see again four fold risk and if there is ductal involvement with atypical ductal hyperplasia this ductal involvement with atypical ductal hyperplasia is seen with seven fold risk then lobular carcinoma in situ is associated with 10 fold risk and ductal carcinoma in situ is associated with 10 fold risk so these are complete risk status i'll explain this i'll repeat this again non proliferative lesions sclerosing adenitis adenosis and ductal papilloma have no risk whereas florid hyperplasia has 1.5 to 2 fold risk atypical ductal hyperplasia has 4 fold risk atypical lobular hyperplasia has 4 fold risk ductal involvement by cells of atypical ductal hyperplasia have 7 fold risk lobular carcinoma in situ will have 10 fold risk and ductal carcinoma in situ will also have 10 fold risk then we have andy what is andy andy is aberrations in normal development and involution this aberrations in normal development and involutions is andy in 15 to 25 years fibroadenomas are most common whereas in adenomas are most common whereas in 25 to 40 years of age fibroadenosis is most common then at more than 40 years of age fibroadenosis is more common than, than duct ectasias so at 15 to 25 years of age fibroadenoma is most common at 25 to 40 years of age fibroadenosis is most common at more than 40 years of age fibroadenosis more than duct ectasia is most common then then let us learn some important points about fibroadenoma so this fibroadenoma is actually a benign lesion of the breast and it is seen in the young patients of around 15 to 30 years of age this is also called has breast mouse so the page, the tumor is highly mobile then if you see the clinical feature you will see presence of lump is seen this lump is the most common presentation investigation of choice is you can do fnac and on mammography you see popcorn calcification is seen with fibroadenoma and the treatment is you will have to observe the lesion because it is benign tumor and alternative treatment like you can do surgical excision can be done if there is any suspicious lesions okay so let me repeat this fibroadenoma again fibroadenoma is a benign tumor seen in young patients at 15 to 30 years of age also called has breast mouth breast mouse because the tumor is highly mobile here you will see a lump which is highly mobile and firm the lump is the most common presentation investigation of choice being fnac on mammography you will see presence of popcorn calcification treatment is observation or benign tumor should be done and alternative treatment is excision surgical excision is done for suspicious lesion or for cosmetic reasons then the next important thing is about mastalgia so what is mastalgia mastalgia can be of two types one we have non cyclical mastalgia second we have cyclical mastalgia so in non cyclical mastalgia this is mainly due to musculoskeletal causes the non cyclical mastalgia is due to musculoskeletal causes this includes teeds syndrome so what do you see in teeds syndrome in teeds syndrome you will see presence of costochondritis is seen in teeds syndrome so the presence of costochondritis is inflammation of one or more costal cartilages is teeds syndrome treatment is you should give intralesional triamcinolone can be given as treatment for the patient with teeds syndrome then in non cyclical mastalgia one more type is mondorf disease in mondorf disease there is something called this is called as sting phlebitis that is it is characterized by superficial thrombophlebitis of the 
inflammatory veins will be seen so the veins involved are you will see involvement of lateral thoracic veins will be seen more than thoracoepigastric veins so treatment in this case is you can give nsaids can be given to the patient for non responding patients excision of the thrombosed vein this thrombosed vein can be excised also okay so this is mandors disease so next we have cyclical mastalgia cyclical mastalgia in that we have fibroadenosis this fibroadenosis or fibrocystic disease it is actually cyclical here there is pain and this pain is cyclical pattern of menses it follows cyclical pattern of menses and there is maximum pain just before the menses it is seen in 25 to 40 years of age and there is bilateral serous nipple discharge will be seen arising from the multiple ducts it is diagnosed by ultrasonography then lumpy breast will be detected on examination on palpation and treatment is you can do weight reduction can be done and regular exercise can be done weight reduction and regular exercise can be done for treatment and you can also give decrease the caffeine intake can be decreased in the patient and vitamin e and primrose can also be given and primrose capsule primrose oil capsule can be given if there is no improvement with this then you can give low dose tamoxifen can be given to the patient so this is about the fibroadenoma so complete mastalgia i will repeat mastalgia again mastalgia is of two types non cyclical mastalgia and cyclical mastalgia non cyclical mastalgia is due to musculoskeletal causes like treat syndrome in treat syndrome it is also called as costochondritis where you will see inflammation of one or more costal cartilages treatment of treat syndrome is you can do intralesional injection of triamcinolone can be given for treat syndrome then second is mondors disease in Ma in mondors disease it is also called as string phlebitis which is characterized by superficial thrombophlebitis of inflammatory veins the veins involved are mainly lateral thoracic vein and thoracoepigastric vein treatment of mondors disease is nsaids can be given and for non responding patients excision of the thrombosed vein can be done then we have cyclical mastalgia cyclical mastalgia also called as fibroadenosis or fibrocystic disease here the pain follows the cyclical pattern of the here the pain follows the cyclical pattern before uh, menses pain occurs before menses 25 to 48 years of age it here the patient presents with bilateral serous nipple discharge which is arising from multiple breasts and diagnosed with ultrasonography the patient will have lumpy breast on examination and palpation treatment is you should advise weight reduction and regular exercise decrease the caffeine intake and vitamin e and primrose oil capsule is given for a minimum of 3 months to the patient if improve if no improvement then low dose tamoxifen can be given then the next important thing is breast cyst in breast cyst here this breast cyst is mostly seen in the last decade of reproductive life it is seen in last decade of reproductive life here it occurs due to non integrated eval involution of stroma it occurs due to non involuted involution of stroma non integrated involution of stroma and epithelium will result in breast cyst so if you see the clinical features these can be multiple these can be bilateral these can even mimic malignancy because of their sudden presentation can be used to differentiate from malignancy investigation if you see you will have to do aspiration can be given can be done plus or minus ultrasonography treatment is also aspiration is done after aspiration if there is any recurrence then we have to do re aspiration should be done in this case so what is breast cyst it is seen in the last decade of reproductive life due to non integrated involution of stroma and epithelium the main clinical features are it is multiple bilateral can mimic malignancy sudden presentation is used to differentiate from malignancy investigation is you see aspiration is done along with my ultrasonography treatment is aspiration for recurrence we can do re aspiration also next the next important thing is about breast abscess 
so where do you see this breast abscess breast abscess is most commonly seen in lactating females it is seen in lactating females most commonly seen in primary females mainly due to the faulty de technique of breast feeding it is mainly seen due to faulty technique of breast feeding and injury to the nipple by which the whenever there is faulty technique of breast feeding there will be injury to nipple and through the nipple there will be staphylococcal aureus will enter the breast skin and thus it produces breast abscess so here the patient presents with pain and tenderness will be there over the effective breast with fever and chills and rigors will be there and breast will be completely engorged and here you will also see the treatment is you should do incision and drainage is done along with antibiotics and if you see the uh, first line the first line agent for breast abscess is you can give cloxacillin or dicloxacillin can be given for a patient for 10 to 14 days next the next important disease is we have zuska's disease in zuska's disease this is also called has recurrent periductal mastitis zuska's disease is recurrent periductal mastitis so it is seen mainly in female smokers and here you will see presence of recurrent breast abscess will be seen in the patients and how are you going to treat it treatment is my you should give incision and drainage is done with antibiotics should be given to the patient so this is about the zuska's disease next thank you Thank you and thank you for watching.